Um, guess what today is? Today is A7S3 day. God, it's 2020 and I just did a dab. Um, it's A7S3 day. I've never been more excited for a camera in my life and I wanna tell you why. Uh, but first, I need to caffeinate and I'm feeling like a tea right now. Set a timer for four minutes. Okay, four minutes and counting. All right, well, my tea steeps. Oh my God, I'm wearing shoes. It's very hard to cross your legs. Well, it's A7S three day. By the way, this video is not sponsored. I pre-ordered this camera the day it dropped, like within the hour I pre-ordered this camera. I have never been more excited for a camera in my entire life. I've been waiting for this camera since July. Correction, I've been waiting for this camera for like three years. Early in the day, I've got my tea steeping. I'm gonna drink that. And then I wanna kinda take a trip down memory lane with the cameras that we've been using since we started this channel and just show you why I was so obsessed with the a7s2 and why i'm so excited for the a7s3 Now, normally i'm not like a huge gearhead but this camera has me freaking pumped and i'm pretty sure i'm never going to need another camera at least for another five years the countdown it's my tea i'm going to go make my tea the countdown is on i would assume that this camera is probably going to arrive sometime this afternoon but the anticipation is killing me this here is the Sony a7S II. This was our first mirrorless vlogging camera and this was released in 2015. This camera completely changed vlogging for us. When we started this channel originally, we had set out to Vancouver to document our life and just basically to hold ourselves accountable to make the most of our one year in Vancouver. When we started the vlog, we actually started on something similar to this. This is the DJI Osmo. We actually have the Osmo Pro with the X5 camera. We thought that this Osmo was going to change the game for vlogging. It was a camera on a gimbal and that's exactly what you wanted. It was tiny, it was easy, we could kind of hold it out, vlog, it wasn't heavy, but in practice it didn't really work and it took a long time to fire up. You had to connect your phone to the app to get the video preview and then of course, because we had the X5 camera with the detachable lenses, we had to focus and set up all that stuff just not as easy as flipping on a camera and hitting record and going. We made a number of videos with this over the few months when we started vlogging and then we decided, you know what, we're missing moments with this. So we ditched this camera and started shooting with the Hero 5 Black. This is actually a Hero 6, couldn't find the Hero 5, but for all intents and purposes, GoPro. As we were able to hit record and start filming right away and we weren't missing all of these really dumb moments that you see in our videos now, funny things were happening and we were just missing them with the Osmo, which is why we started using a GoPro. And now of course with the GoPro you're getting this massively wide field of view and at the time the Hero 5 was really amazing but the quality of footage wasn't so great especially in low light and the audio wasn't so great either. I'm on November 19th, 2016. We're getting Starbucks for breakfast. He's doing his first helicopter class. Our vlogs went from gimbal style footage to GoPro footage with terrible audio. Over that couple of months when we started vlogging, we were trying to get a feel for this whole YouTube thing. We realized that the GoPro wasn't giving us the intended look that we wanted. We had been used to shooting commercial video on Canon 5D Mark IIs and 5D Mark IIIs and obviously a GoPro wasn't giving us that look. We were really excited because this had 4K and this had 4K and we wanted to do 4K. After we realized that this wasn't giving us the look we wanted, but it was giving us the fast moments, we went back to the drawing board to figure out what camera we should get that would fit our needs the best. Enter the Sony a7S II. So today we had the Sony a7S II. No idea if this shot is in focus because I don't really know how to use this camera. We literally had this camera for three days. I'm gonna assume the camera's not waterproof. Hence yeah. why we have this umbrella. We actually rented this camera before we bought it at a local rental house in Vancouver. And the first time we shot with it, we were mind boggled. We fell in love with it. We couldn't believe how good it was in low light. And we decided to pull the trigger and buy one. So winter 2016, we went back to Newfoundland, filmed half of a vlog on the GoPro. And then this showed up in the mail and we filmed the rest of the vlog on this camera. That's my peak straps. 
Sorry. So we started shooting with this camera. It was full frame, which is what we were used to shooting commercial video. It was tiny mirrorless camera compared to the 5D Mark III. And it shot 4K, it shot log, and it shot slow motion. It shot 120 frames per second. Cue slow motion B-roll of everything, including eating tacos, snow falling, walking down the street, you name it. It was like the era of 120 FPS B-roll for the sake of B-roll. We put this camera through the absolute ringer. If you look at it, you can see like the screen is shit hauled. There's dents all over the place, scratches, worn marks. To me, that's a sign of a tool well used. This thing has been with us since 2016. We have brought it <laughs> in the most obscure conditions that one would normally never bring a camera. Hot springs on a tandem bike ride over lava dust, helicopter rides, plane rides, in the rain, in the snow. This thing has been with us for, for everything. This camera is really what made me fall in love with video. When we started our YouTube channel, Chris was the video guy and I was the photographer. I did not like video. If you asked me about audio, I would have no idea. Still don't really know a lot about audio, but I know enough. I didn't love video, but this camera made me love video. And we always talk about how gear doesn't matter and it doesn't really, but if you have a piece of gear that is getting you excited, it's allowing you to capture and tell stories without a hassle, it fits within your workflow, then, then gear matters at that point. Anyway, through all the shit that we bring this through, it survived and it still works. Over time, of course, you know, using this camera, there's no flip up screen, which makes vlogging kind of difficult. You know, you hold your hand out to expose, but then, you know, if your focus doesn't work, well, your shots are kind of ruined. When you're shooting vlogs and shooting YouTube videos and shooting alone, like you kind of rely on autofocus. We picked up the Sony a6400, which is this angle right here, which is what you're seeing now. And we love that camera because it has a flip up screen. It's light, it's small, it's easy to vlog with. We kind of put this on the shelf and started using this camera pretty much full time. There's been a lot of times over the last year or two years since we've been using the 6400 that, you know, we've been in situations where we said, you know, Sony a7S II would absolutely kill it in this scenario where this camera, the 6400 was terrible. Really pushing the low light capabilities on this a6400 here. Yeah, really the a7S II. Yeah. Regret is not bringing it. This is definitely an a7S II uh, situation. situation yeah. Oh, the a7S II would be killing it right now. I started to miss this. And every now and then we would break out this camera. In fact, I broke it out the other night when we were in front of the campfire and the A7R was just not cutting it. Chris and I have shot in, in moonlight in shots with just that was just lit by the moon with this camera and the shots were like great. It really changed everything for me in terms of video. It made me want to get better. It made me want to learn how to color grade log footage. It made me want to improve composition, storytelling. It made me want to use my camera. It made me want to pick up and document. I love this camera. There's some quirks about this camera and they have fixed every single thing in the new version and I'm pumped. So yeah, we always say that gear doesn't matter and it doesn't really, but you know what? You need something to tell your story and this new A7S III has everything I've ever wanted in a camera. And while that camera is absolutely not gonna make me a better YouTuber, a better filmmaker, a better creator, it's going to allow me to tell the stories that I wanna tell and make the visuals that I wanna make with less hassle with the new improved autofocus, better color, 4K 120, 4K 60, 10-bit 422 color. Like these are the things that one could only dream about and they're gonna be in a camera that's as good in low light as this thing is. Anyway, I wanted to reminisce a little bit about our YouTube journey with the Sony a7S II. Again, I've been waiting for this Sony a7S III to come out, this mythical Sony a7S III to come out for a couple of years. And finally it's here. And I have no idea how I'm gonna get any work done today. I don't even know how I've sat down to film this video, but uh, it's on its way. So now we wait. God, I can't even hold in my excitement. I had to take my sweater off because I was sweating way too much. I 
honestly cannot believe. Oh my god. Why am I emotional? I almost don't want the anticipation to be over with because it's exciting. There we go. I wish Chris was here. He's at work. My heart is racing. Taking out all the crappy stuff first. Okay, here we go. Ready? This is the box that it matters. Here we go. Oh my God. Holy chunky. Wow, it looks just like the A7R on the back. Big chunky record button. But this. Wow, wow, wow. I had to smell it. Oh yeah, new Mac smell. New Mac smell, new electronic smell. All right, guys, this is really exciting. This is just, where's the A7S II? Hang on. Let's go find your friend, bud. Let's check out the size difference. We're not gonna do a full tech review on the A7S III. There are so many good channels out there who have already done these in-depth reviews. I'll leave a couple of them in the description box below. Either way, we're gonna start shooting normal videos with it. Uh, curious to see now which of these cameras ends up being our main shooter for this type of video. I'm assuming it's gonna be the A7S III. The A6400, I guess, will be our top-down rig, and the A7R 4 will go back to being our photo-dedicated camera, which I'm excited about. It's gonna be nice to have three cameras that all have reliable autofocus have the same type of color obviously the a7s3 is going to be the superior camera in terms of quality and color I'm gonna go charge up the batteries I'm gonna finish this video so you guys can enjoy it thanks so much for watching my <laughs> journey to waiting for my dream camera I'm super excited it's here I cannot wait to use it oh my god I wish Chris would hurry up and come home so I could show him okay well that's it if you liked the video give it a thumbs up subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified when I post videos we'll see you on the next one bye that was really weird. I'm looking. I'm looking. Look at this. It's here. It's finally here. Finally. It's nice. It's beefy. <laughs> That's also what I did. Did you set it up? No, I just put the 4K and 10 bit. Ooh, 422 10 bit. I can't wait to push that around a little bit. Yeah. I thought I'd wait till you got home to set it up so you could have some fun too. <laughs> and I figured we'd set it up exactly how we had the A7S II set up. Yes. Give me a lens and a card. Apparently the viewfinder is very crisp according to Gerald Undone. I don't think you can see through the viewfinder with no lens on. Well, I can see the, the display mark. Shut up! <laughs>